Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Thanks for being here. I was thinking as Colette was singing, what is it that you need to hear this morning? And I decided to stretch myself a little bit because it's not just me speaking. But to let you know that whatever it is you need to hear, you're going to hear. Not because of me, but because of the openness you bring to yourself, to your work of change, of growth, of healing, that it will happen. You see, that's one of the things sometimes that's missing from our, our prayer. It's being open to the possibility that what we, what we yearn for, what we wish, what we desire for, will be here. Prayer usually begins with the heart of saying, you know, this is something I want, this is something I need, and the higher power or my divine consciousness will bring it to me. But so often what happens is that there's a step in between the manifestation of that truth and the truth really happening, and that is our opening ourselves up to the possibility that it can and will happen. And if that's not there, it's not going to happen. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. I wonder what that means. You know, I said Merry Christmas, I know what that means. Happy New Year, I know what that means. Baby Jesus, New Year. Um, St. Patrick's Day, I know what that means too. We wear green. You pretend you're Irish if you're not. You celebrate St. Patrick driving the snakes out of Ireland. Actually, I think some of the snakes wound up in my family. <laughs> and then you come to Easter, and we have, um, we have chocolate bunnies and Cadbury eggs. And what happened? I sat with that one for a while, and what I, what I came to was that it's too big. It goes beyond what we can even imagine, what we can even think. It goes beyond what we, what we know. It goes beyond what we've ever experienced in our lives. Because the Christ consciousness says on Easter Sunday, I have conquered death. I've gone beyond it. It's not, it's, there's nothing to be afraid of. It's perfectly safe. It's like taking off a shoe that's too tight. It's like getting on a train and going from one station to another. I've rolled back the stone and your deepest, darkest secrets are exposed to the light and they melt away like blocks of ice. There's absolutely nothing that can get in the way of me loving you or you loving me. Period. You are all forgiven, if you're willing to accept that. You're, will, you're forgiven everyone and everything. You are free. There's nothing that gets in the way of your growth of your happiness, of your joy, of your peace. Absolutely nothing. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not there yet. I know that's the message. I know the truth of it. And there are sometimes when I know the truth of something, but I'm really not quite sure whether I believe it or not. You know, and at the end of our service, we go through that, that manifestation prayer, and, and it ends with the words, I am divine. And some weeks that's fine, that kind of rolls off my tongue, and other weeks I go, eh, not quite sure of that one. I mean, it feels good, I like it, I know, I know it's true, but do I believe it's true? So Easter is also about new beginnings. I wonder what it would, see, so we, you know, we need to kind of bring it back to planet Earth. If it's too big to swallow in one big bite, which it is for me sometimes, Let's start with something that's rather practical and say Easter is about new beginnings. What would it be like to wake up in the morning and to be completely unfettered and unattached to the past or the future? No judgment, no fear, just being in the flow. I don't know about you, but I could wake up with that intention and about 30 seconds later, I'm someplace else. Not because I want to be, but because that's the way my mind works. 
In fact, when I say something like this, I think, well, that sounds really nice, but is it even possible? And yet, take a look at yourself just a moment ago. For a brief moment or so as we began, even as I moved the furniture around a little bit, you were just here. You were just present. You were just safe. You were, you were not thinking about being anyone or anything else. You were just right here, right now. And in those brief moments, we are free. And I think that's really one of the reasons why we show up here on Sunday morning. I come to Unity sometimes so I can, be, I can experience myself for maybe a brief, short couple of moments that I can be free. One of the images that goes with Easter an awful lot is, is a caterpillar coming from the chrysalis and becoming a butterfly. An old cartoon I came across years ago was two caterpillars talking to one another. And one of them looks at the other one and, and a butterfly goes by. And one caterpillar looks up and says to the other one, you're never going to get me up in one of those things. <laughs> I want to be, I want to be, but I don't want to be. It's kind of like the Velveteen Rabbit, you know. I want to be real, but I don't want all those painful things happening to me. And so here we are, with our wants and our desires, looking to begin a new day. It was a beautiful piece of um, poetry and music in uh, Jesus Christ Superstar, where Mary Magdalene is speaking to Jesus, saying, could we start again, please? That always just grabs me, just sort of hops in and touches me. Could we start again, please? And you know, that's what the divine is saying to us every moment of every day and every minute we exist. Could we start again, please? Because you can start any time you want to. You don't have to wait until tomorrow happens. You don't have to blame yourself for your mistakes. Could we start again, please, is about recognizing that I goof up and I screw up probably more often than not. And yet I am open to the possibility that life, change, transformation, love, grace is always available to me. And that's the first step, is opening ourselves up to the possibility that this can and will happen. What you desire to change within yourself, what you desire to transform within yourself, can and will happen. But it will happen because of your belief, because of your openness to the possibility as it said in scripture when, when Jesus went back to Nazareth, he said he could not work many miracles there because of their lack of faith. And essentially what that was saying was he couldn't work many miracles there because they didn't believe in the possibility of the miracles happening to them. How could this ever, how could this even, how could he do this? How could it possibly happen with me? The story of Easter begins in the tomb. And by the way, it's okay to be in the tomb because sometimes we're in the dark. It's okay not to be okay. Did you ever put on your unity face? You know what I mean, don't you? Huh? You know, you're not doing really well. You know, it's kind of a crummy day or a crummy week or it's been a difficult time. And, you know, while well, I'm going to unity or I'm going to, a, I'm going to a 12-step recovery meeting, that's another one you put on a face on. And I go, well, how are you doing? I'm fine. When I'm not. Now, I'm not saying you need to do an organ recital with everybody you meet or everybody who asks you how you're doing. But, you know, have a few people in your life that you can tell the truth to and make that real for yourself. It's okay not to be okay. As James was pointing out last week, you know, I'm a mess. Well, I, had a, I remember a friend of mine so he asked me one day, he said, how are you doing? And I, that's the way I answered. I said, I'm a mess. And she looked at me and smiled. I'll never forget this because it was a lesson that I had been waiting to learn for a long time, even though I didn't know I was waiting to learn it. She looked at me and said, no, you're not a mess. You feel like a mess. And I went, oh. Never forgot that moment. You are more than what you feel. Your feelings are real. You need to do something about them with them, but they are not necessarily telling you the truth of who you are because you are not a mess. You are a divine child of God who feels like a mess. 
and you feel like a mess right now, but you might not feel that way tomorrow, but it's not the truth of who you are. Your feelings are never, ever, 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 ever the truth of who you are. Inside the tomb, we think that there's going to be all this creepy, crawly little things. And there are some of those. I've got a few. I'm sure you do too. But inside the tomb, unexposed to the light as yet, are all those good and wonderful things that we believe about ourselves, but not quite. All of those things that we haven't given ourselves the opportunity to open ourselves to and take credit for. You know, a lot of times we think the shadow side is really all of this bad stuff. It is stuff that we've suppressed, yes, that we've denied, that we, but look at, all the, look at all the positive things in your life that you've denied about yourself. Somebody comes up to you and says, you know, you, you're one of the most gentle people I ever know. Oh, no, not really. Sometimes it is so difficult for us to refuse to accept the goodness. Why are we afraid of that so much? In the tomb, it looks, in the tomb is kind of like wintertime. It doesn't look like anything's happening. And then all of a sudden, just like what happens in springtime, the, leaf, the blossoms start coming out, the leaves start coming out, the robins come back. It seems like nothing is happening. It feels like nothing is happening. But there is a knowing inside of our heart and inside of our soul that we are being born and being reborn into new light. And so we begin to roll the stone back, whatever metaphorically that means for you. How long have I been asleep? How long have I been in the tomb? It's like the words from that uh, song, it's in every one of us. It's like I've been sleeping for years. I don't know about you, but it feels that way. And I don't know about you either, whether you fall into this or not, but something I discovered about myself and my own spiritual path is that I will go from moments of waking, of being aware, and then going back to sleep and becoming unaware again. Aware, awake, asleep, unaware. And for a long time, I kind of condemn myself for forgetting, for falling asleep again, for forgetting who I am, for forgetting who you are. And all of a sudden, I decided, I'm, I, not all of a sudden, but after a while, I said, I need to put a hole. Maybe that's what the trip is all about. Is being awake and being aware and falling asleep again. And when you wake up again after falling asleep or becoming unaware, instead of beating yourself up for falling asleep, you become joyful and grateful for being awake. And notice how that totally shifts my consciousness. It totally turns things around. When you pray to be in the light, when you're in the tomb and you pray to be in the light, what you think should happen is the stone will roll back and the sun starts shining and the birds start singing zippity doo da and everything, there are rainbows and lollipops and all kinds of other things, wonderful things. And that's not the way it usually works, is it? The way a friend of mine put it, a teacher friend of mine, she said, you know, when we pray to be in the light, the light doesn't just all of a sudden turn on. What happens is when we pray to be in the light is all the stuff that are, that's keeping us in the dark comes right up in my face to be healed, to be transformed, and be let go of. And it only comes up in my face until I'm ready to work on it. That's a wonderful thing about spiritual truth. You never, nothing is ever going to be revealed to you until you've got the strength and the ability to be able to work on it. But it's always going to be there. And so when I pray to be in the light, all of the stuff that I'm holding on to that's keeping me in the dark comes right up in my face. I remember a teacher friend of mine also was, was talking about the changes that he made. In his, he said, you know, I've been working on my character defects. I've been working on my neuroses for 40, 50, 60 years ever since I became aware of them. And I'm working on them day in and day out and day in and day out. And you know what? They're all still here. All of my neuroses, all of my characters, they're still here. The biggest difference, however, is that instead of me thinking they define who I am, they're still there for me to work on, but they don't define me, nor do they define my truth. So they're still there. They're still there to work on. They're still there to heal. They're still there to transform. They're still there to be, be taken care of by me, by my honest, open self. And yet they are not who I am. They never were. One of my big lessons that crops up in many, many different ways is what I like to call not enoughness. 
You familiar with that one? I know I'm not the only one. My not enoughness. It shows up in my speaking, shows up in my writing, it shows up in my music, shows up in my relationships. And so I begin to start moving the stone away and this deep, dark place inside of me where I think all of these creepy crawlies are going to be that I'm scared of opening, to, exposing to the sunlight, I begin to realize that the truth and the honesty and the wonderful, the unconditional love and the talent and the gifts that I have, and the, they're still there as well. And so I start to push back the stone. I start pushing back the stone away from my not enoughness. And what is there beyond my not enoughness is unconditional love. More than my feelings. The realization that I am more than my feelings. The realization that, as Paul said, nothing can separate me from the love of God. The openness to the truth of who I really am, like I like to say quite often, the, the good news is you're not who you think you are. Neither is anybody else for that matter, okay? But it's such a revelation sometimes when I realize that again. The ego says, Marion Williamson, one time we described this, he said, you know, the ego says that if you were to open yourself up to another human being and let them see you as you truly are, the ego says that, that they would run away in horror. Whereas the truth is they would be overcome by the light. Wouldn't that be interesting if we just believed that for a few moments? And so I pushed the stone a little bit further and a little bit further. It seems like an impossible task because I'm still in the dark. I push and I push and I push and nothing seems to happen. I don't realize that I'm pushing against years and years and years and lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes of inertia that's not only covered up the things inside of me that need to heal, but has covered up those positive, beautiful, wonderful gifts that you and I have inside of ourselves. But if I'm willing to keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing, it begins to move a little bit. And as soon as that happens, the unconditional love, the truth of who I am, starts to shine through. And we've all had moments like that. But the thing about it is, though, it's not over yet. It's not a one-shot deal. It never is. It never was. It takes strength and courage and de deliberateness to move from a high, lower vibration to a higher vibration. It takes work to let go of my ego consciousness to open myself up to what is real. All patterns of behavior and thought and action are really comfortable. And the more comfortable I am, the harder they are to let go of. Not that that's the self-judgment, it's just the realization that if you want to change, if you want to transform, what's going to need to happen is you're going to have to let go of those things. You're going to have to let go of your blankie. Okay, Linus says, it's time to grow up. It's time to put your blankie. I know, it, I know it's kept you safe all these years. I know, it's got, I know it's got a lot of energy around it. I know it's who you think you are. I know it's what you think you need, but it's not who you are and never was. Can you let go of your blankie? Can you roll a stone back and let the light become part of your being? Let it be the, the truth of who you are. Every once in a while, there comes a spiritual teacher who has such a level of intimacy, sweetness, um, simplicity, and yet wisdom came across one of these teachers a while ago. His name was Dr. Seuss. And Dr. Seuss describes the Easter experience quite well, I believe. You will come to a place where the streets are not marked, some windows are lighted, but mostly they're dark. A place you could sprain both your elbow and chin. Do you dare to stay out? Do you dare to go in? How much can you lose? How much can you win? And if you go in, should you turn left or right or right quarters? Or maybe not quite, or go around back and sneak in from behind? Simple it's not, I'm afraid, but you'll find for a mind maker upper to make up his mind. He 
You can get so confused you'll start to race down long wiggled rows at a breaknecking space and grind on for miles across weirdish wild space headed for I fear the most useless place the waiting place for people just waiting waiting for a train to go or a bus to come or a plane to go or mail to come or a train to go or a phone to ring in the snow to snow or waiting around for a yes or a no waiting there for the hair to grow everyone is just waiting waiting for the fish to bite waiting for the wind fly a kite waiting for Friday night waiting perhaps for Uncle Jake or a pot to boil, or a better break, or a string of pearls, or a pair of pants, or a wig of curls, or another chance. Another chance. Could we start again, please? Easter says, don't take your fears so seriously. Be not afraid, little flock. I have only come the world. I am free. I am no longer bound by preconceived notions or images or ideas. I am no longer bound to my thinking mind. I am no longer bound to the silly rules and conditions for happiness that I made up for myself. Did you ever do that? Make up rules for yourself? I'm doing that all the time. What happened if I break them? Of course, nobody knows what they are. Well, you know, I can't be happy until I do this. I can't rest until I do that. I am free of whatever silly rules or conditions for happiness that I've made up for myself. It's okay for me to play or not. My feelings never define who I am. I am a divine child of God, never separate from unconditional love. No matter how I feel, whatever my feelings might be, they are not a definition of who I am or my spiritual being. The light has never gone out. Love is always greater than fear and even though it doesn't seem that way. And may I close with something that I used a couple of weeks ago, but I think is totally perfect for Easter. I believe in that this was written on a concentration wall camp. I believe in the sun, even when it's not shining. I believe in love, even when there's no one there. I believe in God, even when he is silent. I believe through any trial there is always a way, but sometimes in this suffering and hopeless despair, my heart cries for shelter to know someone's there. But a voice rises within me saying, hold on, my child. I'll give you strength, I'll give you hope, just stay a while. I believe in the sun even when it's not shining. I believe in love even when there's no one there. But I believe in God even when God is silent. I believe in through any trial there is always a way. May there someday be sunshine. May there someday be happiness. May there someday be love. May there someday be peace. May all beings be at peace. May all beings be free of suffering. And may all beings remember who they are. Happy Easter.